Hello, my little chickadees. I'm back, baby. I, uh, changed the light bulb. I don't think anyone will notice. Seems I picked a good time to rematerialize because Boris Johnson has finally resigned following mass walkouts from his cabinet after a string of scandals. He kind of reminds me of that troll from Lord of the Rings. You know, Fellowship of the Ring, you know, the first one. They have a cave troll. No matter how much destruction he causes or how many people jump on his back, he just won't go down until he's poked with the biggest shame spear in existence. <laughs> I mean, I gotta hand it to him. All throughout his term, he's had this amazing ability to not give one single sh about what people think of him. Normally that would be an admirable quality, but not so much when you're making constantly terrible decisions that affect everyone. All the scandals he's been complicit in, all the webs of lies he's spun. So many lies. He has so little respect for the democratic process, for the millions of working class people adversely affected by his horrific choices as PM. I mean, I would applaud his commitment, if he wasn't a morally bankrupt piece of rhino excrement. Oh, cool. As for his cabinet of ministers, don't think they left for righteous reasons. Oh no! If they were doing that, they wouldn't have joined Johnson's cabinet in the first place. They knew who he was. They, like Johnson, will only make moves to protect their own interests. But this is not just about Johnson or Chris the Pincher Pincher. Nice name. Or any of the other Tory MPs embroiled in this shameful nonsense. Because because someone's going to replace the PM, and that will not solve a single problem. I mean, only a month ago, Johnson won a no-confidence vote against him, despite his abysmal track record in office. Every single one of those Tory MPs who voted to keep him are complicit in this madness. This farce of a government, featuring admirable representatives of our good society, sexually assaulting people at parties, watching porn in the middle of the House of Commons, attending drunken parties at number 10 during lockdown, whilst we watch relatives die on Zoom. I could go on. It seems that the sole purpose of the Conservative Party is to protect themselves and their millionaire friends and royally f the rest of us. Never has this been more evident than the cost of living crisis. Or to use the official title, the Tories are trying to kill you crisis. I mean, I'd probably feel much better if they just came out and said those words. We want to kill you all. Die, poor people, die. Rather than hiding behind this inflated price rise bullcrap. If you're gonna kill me, just be honest about it. I'll understand. Once I'm dead. Rising energy bills. Rising fuel prices. Skyrocketing goods prices due to that word we are not allowed to say. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. Brexit! Denying workers a fair pay rise. Thankfully, the leader of the opposition. And by leader of the opposition, I of course mean this guy. And fight back against this suppression of wages. Who single-handedly... And what do you think we'll do? We run a picket line and we'll ask them not to go to work. Took to pieces. Well, I think Jonathan should apologise for talking nonsense. Every right-wing journalist... Richard, you do come up with the most remarkable twaddle. ...who tried to take him on. It's a good job that the media pulled Lynch from any further televised appearances before he could inspire any kind of increase in union membership interest. Oh no, too late, that already happened. It is absolutely hilarious, journalists trying to pin the blame for the strikes on the RMT conveniently leaving out the reason they are striking in the first place. The bosses of big business are taking home eye-watering salaries and bonuses. And energy companies are making record profits. Whilst workers are getting a real terms pay cut. And this isn't just trains. This is happening in all sectors all over the country. But since the RMT is a union, they actually have the ability to organize, to fight for the pay they deserve. The whole point of a strike is to be inconvenient to disrupt, so people will actually pay attention. And by golly gosh, are people now paying attention? Union membership interest is way up, and more strikes are planned for the rest of the year. Oh no, what a shame, what a shame, what a shame. <laughs> wow, who knew? That people actually don't want to get f***ed into oblivion if they can help it, and will fight for their rights if they're given a platform to do so. And it seems that the effects of the government's terrible decisions are finally being felt at the ballot box, where Johnson lost two by-elections at once. Starmer's Labour claimed this a big victory for them, despite both the Labour and Tory vote share plummeting. Starmer. 
the so-called leader of the party of the working class, who claimed to be a unionist back when he was bidding for leadership, but then ordered his MPs not to join union picket lines during the RMT strikes. He's now rolled back on every single pledge that he made to secure his leadership, <laughs> stating Labour will be starting from scratch. It basically means that he said whatever he needed to to get your vote. And now he's thrown it in the bin because he doesn't need it anymore. Suspending and even expelling socialist members on bullshit claims and flip-flopping on every single goddamn policy to suit their own agenda. And I'm not quite sure what that agenda actually is. Because it's obviously not to help the working class. And I'm sure there are those of you out there who will say, let's let bygones be bygones and support Starmer to get the Tories out. And I say to you, no, I'm not doing that. F no, a vote for that m is a vote to enable privileged men with bags of money to do whatever the f they want. Sound familiar? I honestly can't really see a difference anymore between Starmer and Johnson. They are essentially standing on the same side of the fence. Just one is a bit further towards the cesspit of awfulness than the other. But not that much further, mind. And warning, this is a controversial thought. For some reason it's controversial. But shouldn't we be able to elect regular working class people like us to represent us? People who aren't privately educated, weird, alien being things born into extortionate wealth and power. You don't have the first idea about the needs and the plights of regular working class people going about their daily lives. My question to you is, why should we need to compromise? Why should we have to settle for middle of the road, wishy-washy, on the fence bullshit? Because that's exactly what centrism is. It's a compromise between what's fair and what's not fair. And why the f would any of us want that? Why can't we just have fair? Why can't we just have good? And policies that don't condemn us to an early grave because we're not lucky enough to be born into wealth and privilege. People are struggling. People are suffering. And this cost of living crisis is a political choice. To try and shift the responsibility for propping up this broken country from those that can afford it onto those who can't. And that is not sustainable because people are rapidly running out of options. And if you push people to the brink, well, they'll either break or they'll fight. And as Mr. Lynch so eloquently put it, We refuse to be poor anymore. So I'm definitely not telling you to go and join a union. I'm definitely not telling you to get organized. I'm definitely not telling you to go on strike if you need to, to get the pay you deserve. I'm definitely not telling you to go and f up. And I definitely won't be there with you. Because I need to go and whack some balls. It's Wimbledon week, people. Get your head out of the gutter. Yeah.